story. This is how we are living my Alaska. Central Alaska, first week of January. Zero degrees Fahrenheit, 5 p.m. Coachman 2023, Coachman Galleria 24FL 4x4 on the Sprinter, Mercedes Sprinter 3500 4x4 dually chassis, 170 wheelbase extended. We're testing the Truma Combi hot water and heater furnace on propane at the moment. You can see the exhaust gas from the propane running exit of the van. There's no smell. I think it's pretty much just water vapor that comes out. It's warm. It's quite chilly out here. Lots of windows on this van presents an issue, isn't it? So Coachman does quite a nice job wrapping this van in insulation for sound deadening and thermal insulation. Quality windows for sure. But as you know, just like in a home, windows present challenges for cooling and heating. So we will go inside and we will put down the shades to help with insulation and we will put up the driver's compartment window insulators and we'll see how that helps it's cozy in there one of the issues we have in winter with this van it's which is this big door in the summer this works great in the winter not so much so as you'll see when we go to open it Well, and this time it opened just like it should. So bravo. Welcome inside. Some of the lights are on. So it's actually 43 degrees. It went from 30 to 43 degrees in about 10 minutes in here. And I've got the door open, so that's not going to help. But at the moment, we've set it to air heater, gas, automatic. And it's set at 71 right now. We'll drop it down to about 67. <laughs> Currently 43. Lots of beautiful lights in this thing. We're going to light it up. And have great fun with it. Come on inside. These window shades provide quite a bit of insulation. An impressive amount of insulation, actually. You can see... Our windows are starting to freeze up. My hands are very cold right now, painfully so, because it is zero and dropping fast. We expect negative 10 tonight. But these window shades are made out of a material that seems to do quite a nice job in insulating from the outside. I think the gold standard for vans right now is the attachable insulator things that one can put up in the window. And that probably works, just does better than this. But this has been pretty good down to zero degrees here. And so we pull these window shades down and in the future I'll probably buy the, the uh, fitted window, sh window insulators that one can snap in here and that'll provide extra insulation of about an inch and then pull this cover down and you'd be really insulated. So back here. Even the rear, that's the rear doors. Pull this down and you can feel instantly the blocking of the cold air stays behind this shade. Current temperature inside the van, 39 degrees. Warming up quickly. Propane is at 40%. Truma says it's 42 degrees in here. And again, this is the Truma Combi furnace and hot water system, roughly four gallon hot water tank combined with either propane for heat or electricity to heat the water or electricity. One thing to note with the electric power, even if you're on 30 amp, below 30 degrees, the electric power struggles to keep the van warm. 
for the furnace. The propane is much more effective at creating heat for the van and much more effective at speeding up the process of making hot water when we need it. The next step in insulating the inside of this Coachman Galleria 24FL Class B is putting the window insulators for the driver's compartment. These were provided with the van at when we bought it new from our dealer and they fit in this sleeve and so we'll go ahead and put these in and we'll see how it helps warm up the inside of this very cozy and warm camper van. This is what we have. This round piece here faces forward. Coachman was nice enough to get this from Mercedes with seats that are powered and also reclined and swivel, which is an extra expense, but really appreciate them doing that because now you can see why. <clears throat> Here's how we do it. Here. So I can feel a little bit of a... There's a round metal thing here. I believe that is a magnet. Another one here, another one here. But there's nothing really for that magnet to grab onto. There's no metal here. So as I open the door, there's metal there. and I let it sit, and we shut. And so now, we have an insulated cabin. Here is our insulated cabin on the Coachman 24, Coachman Galleria 24FL 4x4, with the insulators for the windows in place for the driver's compartment. And folks, that makes a huge difference in terms of insulating this cabin to keep the cold out. Coachman provided us with swivel seats as a standard option on this van. And as you can see, what is, this is a great place to have a place to sit, to remove your boots, put back on your boots before you go outside. And it's just another comfortable place to sit in a very limited space as a camper van. So let's go ahead and see how we're doing. It's been about 30, 45 minutes since we fired up the Truma Combi furnace and we started in here at roughly 30 and it's currently 48 degrees in here it's warming up quickly one more slide to pull down here and this will complete our attempt at insulating this van for a cold night in Alaska that will be sub-zero below zero tonight we're expecting negative 10 So we'll do a quick walk around and show you how we've done this. So blinds that do a pretty good job insulating, probably a window insulator that snaps in would even be a better choice. A combination of those two things would be absolutely wonderful. Vans are rolled down, I mean, excuse me, blinds are rolled down all across the back of the cabin. Quite a bit warmer back here than up front. At least it feels that way. Yep. My own gauge says it's 48 degrees back here in that corner. Truma, Truma says it's 48 degrees. So it's measuring quite well. We're plugged into shore power right now, 120 volt outlet. And as you can see, our batteries are happy and healthy. These are AGM, I believe 330 amp hour batteries. And they do quite well in the cold cozy very cozy so now we wait I'll check back with you in with you later and I'll share with you how we do 
as we warm this thing or att attempt to warm this van van to uh, what we consider sleeping conditions. My goal is to warm this van to at least 62 degrees tonight to be comfortable to sleep in. And we'll see how long that takes. We'll get back with you soon. So welcome back, leaving my Alaska. We're inside the Coachman 2023 Coachman Galleria 24 FL 4x4. And it's currently negative two degrees outside and we started the Truma Combi propane fired furnace about 30 or 45 minutes ago. And we are currently up to a balmy 52 degrees in here. These vents down here, you can feel. If I put my hand close enough to this vent, that's some very hot air. I can't hold my vent, my hand there very long. It gets too hot for me. So this is a 2023 Coachman Galleria 24FL 4x4. We purchased this brand new in Florida on our way back to Alaska. Drove it back to near Bellingham, Washington, near Seattle. Put it on a shipping container barge and shipped it to Anchorage. And we've been enjoying it ever since. So one of my favorite things about this van is the fact that it has a microwave. This is also a convection oven. We don't do much cooking in this van because it takes too much energy and it smells up the van. But we certainly use the microwave as we prepare lots of meals before we go on trips and we stick them in the freezer. So it works very well. This is a very large closet. It's 104 for storage. This is the bathroom. It's roomy enough. Um, this has a more of a realistic type toilet in it. It's not a cassette toilet. It has a dump valve just like a regular RV. In an emergency situation, you have a bucket. We rarely use the shower, almost never. It takes too much water. And we use showers, when we travel, we use showers at campgrounds and hotels and such. One of the largest refrigerators you can get in this kind of a van in the Class B segment. Refrigerator, freezer. And they were smart enough to make a freezer that it's a drawer so you open it. You don't have to bend down there and dig in. You open the drawer, everything's there for you. And it works very well, very energy efficient. This is our power control station. This is how we control the Truma. We have heaters on the tanks and some of the lines. But at this temperature, I don't think I would count on them. Solar charger for the 330 amps of solar panels we have on the top. This is how we put it in store mode when we're not using it. And this is for your LP tank, your propane. The very nice, very luxurious, built by Mercedes driver's compartment with the window insulators in place. This would not be possible tonight without these things in place. We lose a tremendous amount of heat through these windows. And in the summer, you have a tremendous amount of heat that comes in through these windows. And when you go from the back of the van to the front of the van, you can see a major difference in temperatures. And this helps tremendously. Coachman put almost every option we could find on one of these. And they did a great job. This is sort of something like, I think it's called ultra leather. And it feels like comfortable leather, but it's much more durable. We find these to be extremely comfortable. Some of the most comfortable seats I've ever owned in any kind of vehicle I've owned. And I've owned some very expensive vehicles. I really appreciate Coachman including heated seats with power adjustable uh, on the door there. And that really helps out a lot. All your controls there. They were smart enough to consider including seats that swivel. Both of these swivel. This one's extremely useful when it swivels around. One of the best things I really appreciate Coachman putting in this van, and I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen another one with this option, is a heated windshield. There are lines in this windshield. If you could see, they're very thin. When you press that button, whatever ice is on that windshield is gone within a few minutes. And it's a, of fantastic value in these temperatures in a place like Alaska. It would also not be possible to be in this van tonight with negative five Fahrenheit temperatures outside without these. They're very simple. It's just a blind, but it seems to make a tremendous difference in terms of insulating from the outside. 
And if we wanted an extra level of insulation, we could add window insulators like the front, like this, to pop in here and then pull this down for a double layer. And I think that would be the gold standard. This is how we control our Truma. This is for hot water and for heat and cooling. And as you can see, we're up to 53 degrees. We're making quite a bit of progress. Coachman didn't just build this van with just one outlet. These air outlets are found all up and down and they put out quite a bit of hot air. An extensive cabinet network. And they've done, these are quality cabinets, tongue and groove. These little catches keep the drawers closed when we're traveling. One of the things we added that helps quite a bit, so we have drinking water straight out of our faucet, is this. It was a very simple install. Instead of trying to put something under the sink, this works quite well. This we almost never use because we don't cook in here. You could, but again, it smells up the van. <clears throat> I guess in the in the warmest part of the summer we could open up the doors pull the windscreens and the bug screens in and ventilate the van as we cook but we just don't um one of the other things we can do to insulate this van is get an insulated cover like we have for the windows for this and we see these quite often lots of storage here i didn't know i had water in there i guess that needs to come out vitamix Beautiful cabinetry all along. Coachman insulated the inside of these things for temperature and sound deadening. And I really appreciate them doing that. This is good quality felt, I think. This is to control your vent fan. One of the nice things we enjoy is this. Reading at night. And you can make it, if you wanted to, you can make it quite cozy in here. So they gave us lots of ports to charge things, type C and one of the older USB port. Wonderful, both sides. And if you wanted to change the look in here, we can start turning off some of the lights. We have front and rear mood lights, bath light can turn off or cabinet, front cabinet. Golly. So now I'll show you how we set it up for the evening. We leave the reading lights on. The reading light controls these. If you turn that reading light off, sorry, I might've blinded you there, but if you turn the reading light off, you'll shut these off. One of the more interesting things about this little light, it shows a really, an effort to install quality in every little detail. And I'll show you what happens up here. So now it's dark. It's a night light. Touch it again. And it's your reading light. Night light and a USB port. A really nice little touch of detail. And otherwise you don't see in this level of a package. So this is generally how we set it up for the evening. A little bit of light, a little bit of cozy. I'll walk up here, we'll show you what it looks like from this end. Really nice, really inviting, very well done. This ceiling is soft. It feels like leather. You can tell there's a heavy amount of insulation under here when you push on it. It sound deadens, which is a very valuable thing in this van. It's, it deadens the sound and vibration from the road and the echo in here. It also provides a meaningful amount of insulation. Bravo to Coachman for doing this, for making this extra effort. If you want to turn them off more of these lights, Cabinet LED is there. It simply provides you with a view of the floor. You can turn off some of these mood lights. And that's generally how we use it when we're set up in the evenings to relax. 
Let's see how we're doing on the Truma. 54. So as it gets closer to 60, it seems like it slow down, slows down a little bit. I know it's struggling. I know it's working hard. I hear it. They say propane doesn't work below zero. In this case, it is. This machine also has a generator. We could start the generator now. It's an Onan generator powered by propane. Um, I have no desire to start there now. There's no, but if you hit that button, it will start even at negative five degrees. I've never tried it at negative 15, but we will one day. Actually, take that back. I did. I tried to start this at negative 20, and it started, and it ran quite well, even when the main engine on this thing really struggled, and most diesel engines won't start at negative 20, negative 25. So, bravo. Um, <clears throat> but we're quite pleased with the performance so far. Okay. I'll get back with you as we watch temperature climb. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living My Alaska. I figured while we watch the temperature climb and we track how we're doing with this Truma propane fired furnace system, we'd watch how Chad's doing on his way to the Arctic Circle in his Sprinter van. And I figured you might enjoy some comments about Alaska from a guy who actually lives in Alaska. Let's watch. Turn to the Arctic series in which I'm driving my 2020 Mercedes Sprinter 4x4 van all the way up to Dead Horse, Prudhoe Bay, Alaska in the dead of winter time for some extra. So Dead Horse is all the way north. It's not possible to go to drive any, any farther north than Dead Horse. It is at the Arctic Ocean <clears throat> at the Prudhoe Bay oil field where the Alaskan pipeline begins. It's roughly 500 miles from Fairbanks to Prudhoe Bay and then another 500 miles back, mostly on an unpaved gravel two-lane road that is maintained all year round by a dedicated crew. And most of it is through some of the most remote and extreme areas of Alaska that anyone has ever seen. Let's check back on the Truma. So currently, 55 degrees. We're doing it. We're making progress. So my Starlink is quite a bit of ways away from me. So the link is not exactly as the, as it, at its ideal right now. I think I the Starlink is probably 30 or 40 feet away from the van. And so the Wi-Fi signal is not as strong as it should be. Starlink performs really well and it's usually much quicker than this i believe this is my fault not starlings there we go so the primary goal of the of the dalton highways was for the truckers and those truckers travel that road 24 7 seven days a week 24 hours a day no matter what the road conditions no matter what the weather conditions because the supplies are desperately needed in Dead Horse and at Prudhoe Bay. And they truly are real professionals and heroes. They generally travel in packs or in caravans for safety. Because if one of them goes down, they can retreat to another truck and help each other out. This is not a trip I would ever make by myself, especially not in winter. Okay, let's check how we're doing. It's been about one hour since I started the Truma. We are currently at 59 degrees, so we're going to call this a success. I don't know how long it would take to get to 62, and I may not try it tonight, but I know it is a roughly negative five outside, and it is a warm 59 degrees in here, and it took the Truma Combi approximately one hour to do that. And Truma still thinks it's 57 on its thing, but I believe this one. Um, I'd say this is a success. This is more than adequate to spend the night in here and it's quite warm especially how i'm dressed right now um, i'd say this was success i don't know if it would be adequate at negative 20 but at negative five it certainly works and if we get a negative 20 we'll let you know thank you so much for watching as we hunt we harvest we homestead and we adventure our way through the last frontier please like subscribe and share our videos 
because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.